I think of what today's China, so 80s was very much a time when China became what it is today. Today's China is an interesting and sometimes confusing mixture. Politically, it is authoritarian, and economically, there's a market economy. But the market economy is not completed. The Long Hans government are still there, controlling all the important industry, petrol, um, telecom, mining. Since my book is called um, Socialism is Great, people often ask me, is China still a socialist country? By the way, socialism is great. It's not exactly my political statement. It's a title of famous revolutionary song. I would have been happy to burst into singing for you if it is not a bit harsh to the ear. <laughs> Now, back to the point of a socialism or communism. It's a bit confusing. Maybe let me share a story told to me by the former British Deputy Prime Minister John Prescott, a story about Panda. In 1974, Sir Edward Heath paid a visit to China. He had just lost the election, so he was not a, a state leader, but、uh, because he was one of the first Western leaders who showed friendliness to China, so he was given full treatment. Mao received him several times, and before he left, Mao said, "Do you have any wish?" Sir Edward said, "Yes, I would like to have a panda, as goodwill from the Chinese people to the British people." Mao said, "No problem." A pair of panda were presented to him. Cha Cha and Ching Ching lived very many years very happily in the London Zoo, but have probably died by the time John Prescott came to Beijing in 1998. Our then Premier Zhu、uh, Rongji warmly received him. The, the two pragmatic men got along very well. Before John Prescott left, Zhu Rongji said, "Do you have any wish?" John Prescott said, "Yes, I'd like to have a, a panda." As goodwill from the Chinese people to the British people, Jerome said, "No problem, one million U.S. dollars." John Christ, what? Sir Edward didn't have to pay. Why did he have to pay one million? Our premier said, "This is called a socialist market economy with Chinese characteristics." <laughs> so, so you see, there isn't a ready-made box that fits China development model. From planned economy to the market economy with Chinese characteristics, China has gone through dramatic changes. The same can be said about my personal life. In the end of 1990, after 10 years as a factory, I finally met my way to England. Once over there, a childhood dream stirred. I took a course in in journalism. Three years later, when I returned to China, I started my career, my new career. As a helper, assistant to the foreign journalist, and I very much loved the job. I learned a lot, but I found it frustrating because I didn't have the final say. So I gave up my job, pursue a career, a journalist of my own own rights, and I write in, in English for international publication. And to be honest, my English, I'm not language gifted. After diligently studying English. For more than a quarter of a century, I still make the very basic mistakes. I'm sure you have noticed, but、um, I enjoy the challenge, and also I feel I have something different to offer. That is the insight into a society which still remains largely unknown in the West.、Um, now I'm based in Beijing and work mainly as a writer. I'm just finishing and polishing my first novel. About prostitution set in modern-day Shenzhen. That's a few pure work of fiction. I like to point out, <laughs> not another memoir based on personal experience. <laughs> I've done few things in my life, but not prostitute yet.、Um, for me, prostitution opens a new, interesting window to see the tensions brought by the reform.、Um, I also、uh, work. Uh, I give a few lectures and a few speeches, and I serve as a social commentator,、um, being interviewed, often being interviewed by the world media. So all the different bits of things I do actually come down to one thing: being the cultural bridge between China and the West. That's, that's my self-appointed mission in life. Something I feel very passionate about. You know, China has grown so to be so important to be ignored. Yet 
there's still so much misunderstanding, so much ignorance about China. And I have a, a strong impression that many people in the West fear about China or worried about China, at least feel uneasy about China and China's rapid rise. And in many ways, I can understand why there's such a fear, you know. Um, politically, we don't have, there's no democracy, and there's lack of transparency, and China has poor human rights. Um, and also, you know, China doesn't exactly know how, how to play the soft power. And I, I, I remember that at my book launching party in New York, um, the first question was fired by an elderly American gentleman, and he said, do we Americans stand a chance as if China is going to take over America in a minute? And I understand there's such, why there's such a fear, but I think some of the fear is generated, generated by ignorance. I think for some people, they, they have a very fixed idea about what China, what, what China is like, and they, in some ways they're also trapped in their well. Um, they're not willing to be open-minded to see how much has China changed. So what I want to do um, is to help people to understand where China was coming from, what are happening now, where China is going. I think once you know China better, then there's less fear, there's um, definitely more empathy. And I understand that some of you come from the business community. I mean, if you understand a bit of Chinese culture, it can certainly help you in your business dealings in China. For example, to help you to communicate with Chinese people. You know, many Chinese people don't never say no directly because it's regarded as rude to do so. Um, so bear in mind that the Chinese culture belongs to the so-called high context culture. And you have to get into consideration of the particular location, the particular situation, the facial expression, and so on. So I, I find it quite interesting, and I think my experience of living abroad has helped me to understand my own culture, because it has given me a new perspective. That's my story, a frog has been jumped out of the well. Now I feel my world is just so large, you know. Every day, honestly, I just tell myself how lucky I am to be able to do things I have always wanted. I mean, it's not easy writing in any language, it's not easy, but in the end, I think fighting for something worthwhile, worthwhile keeps us going. Thank you for your attention.